Good evening and welcome. It's Ruth here at Artful Stampin'. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world and whenever you're watching this. Thank you for watching this replay of a live video. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be playing with a gorgeous, lovely lily pad. Now, <clears throat> some of you may have realised this, but uh, for those of you who don't, this stamp set can only be earned for free right now. You have to put in a qualifying order, and in the UK that's £45. If you order £45 of gorgeous Stampin' Up! products, you then get to choose what you would like to have as your freebie. And this is currently one of the offerings that, that is available for you to choose. So if you place an order with me, it's really easy to do. You click on the link below to shop. You know, it says shop with Artful Stampin', uh, click on that link and it will take you to an online secure store where you can place an order and have it shipped directly to your home. You just char you, you get charged four ninety five postage, but you can order as much or as little as you want. Now, obviously, it's advisable that you put in a decent and you know order uh, to to make the make use of the benefits of that. Right. This is a new one that's landed on my desk. I had a little play with it this afternoon and I look, I did a little bit more colouring with it as well and did some masking to show how you can mask things off. So I thought it'd be nice to do a bit of a one sheet wonder with it and see what happens. And I have chosen a few colours out, but you know, we might go a little bit off piece, do something else, but we'll see. Right, I'm wondering whether to actually use a bit of lovely lipstick to stamp the lily pad itself rather than going for black. Yay, Susan's on the live. <laughs> we were messaging earlier and she said, I can watch you live. <laughs> oh, good. I'm really glad, Susan. It's lovely to have your company, as always. Right, there we go. But I've got the pigment sprinkles just to the side just in case we fancy doing a little bit of sprinklages I didn't get the dyes, no so this is lovely lipstick or le vrai vermille or cusserot so what does cusserot mean? Lips, lipstick hmm, there we go I don't know I'm asking, Martina will be able to tell me what does cusserot mean? Right. Oh, scary. Plain piece of paper. <laughs> Kissing red. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, let's let's just do it, shall we, guys? Oh, nice. Very nice. And then I've got my masks ready here. So I'm thinking a little bit of masking just to do a second one. Maybe we'll go for four different sections. I don't know why I took the mask off because I'm going to need to leave that on to do something else. Silly me. Go. Okay. I think I cut out four or maybe even six in one go. I stamped it on some sticky note and then I cut out six in one go, which does save a lot of time if you can do that. So you just pop the mask over the top and as you can probably see, you can see the outline a little bit. I always cut my mask slightly smaller or rather inside the line of the image. Hello and welcome. Is there anybody on here that's on my live for the first time? It's always lovely to have new watchers come on. And join this fabulous stamping community of people who love to stamp artfully uh, or like to watch me stamp artfully and then have a go themselves. So if you want to join in and get to know a few more people in that community, please do join Artful Stamping Space. It's where my little Facebook group, well, I say little, there's 200 members now, which is amazing because it kind of... Uh, it was pootling along, a few, you know, about 20 members and then it's suddenly gone crazy. So it's really lovely to have so many people participating and joining in and taking, uh, sharing photos of things that they've made. 
Right, I don't have any more what-sits. We might just have to focus on a bit at a time. Might do that. Let's just do that for now. Right, okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's have a think. What else do we want in the background? I'm just going to clean this stamp up really quickly because I know it's likely to get a bit of... Uh, you see how it's already dyed, not dyed, that's the word, stained. So I'm going to get up my cleaner and use it on it immediately to try and prevent it get it going too pink. So this is a new cleaner from Stampin' Up. So, Oh wow, look at the difference, isn't that incredible? So the trick is to use it straight away and it really helps to minimise the amount of ink stainage. Wow, 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 wow. Whew. That was incredible. Right, okay. So the special thing about this stamp set is, I don't know if you can see from the packet, well, you can see from the packaging, you've got this detailed image here. Then you have this splodge here. But when you actually look at the stamps, ah, you've got that. So that's because these are designed to stick on the other way. Now, I have had people say, oh, but it doesn't fit exactly over the top. It is not meant to sit exactly over the top. However, if you want to experiment with using, um, I don't know, a little piece of plastic or something, let's see if we can do it now. I don't know how it's going to turn out. It might just all be, you know, a hoax and might not work. <laughs> let's see if we can sort of do it. Right, so I've got Melon Mambo here. Oh my goodness, I'm regretting this already. Look how pink that's gone. And I've got a piece of plastic packaging here and I'm just going to stamp that over the top like that. Oh, it's a bit splotchy. Let's see if we can get this to match up-ish. Oh, sort of. As I said, it does look a little bit splotchy. But there we go. It, it sort of colours it in in a slightly better way than if I'd just turned it over. Should I do that again? I don't know if I just put a little bit too much ink on there. But I'm afraid. Oh, let's um, try to do that one again. Oh, I don't know. Let's just go over the top of that one again. Oh, I can't line it up now. Oh, that's because it's upside down. Were you all shouting at me? Ruth, you had it upside down. You can get very inky and messy doing this. Anyway, if you like that kind of faux watercolour effect, which is what it's ended up looking like. Oh, where have it gone? Just transfer a bit more. It feels like, you know, do you remember we used to do those rub-ons? It feels a bit like that, doing this. <laughs> Right, let me clean this off. Shall I try again in a different pink or a different colour? Let's see what work, see if that would work. Um, what about a bit of um, flirty flamingo? Let's try that. So basically, you've got it on there with the bold image. Bold, not bold. Stamp it onto the plastic. Yeah, it kind of... I know what, let me see if I can find my silicone sheet. Where's my silicone sheet gone? I did find it the other day. Because I think the silicone sheet would transfer in a slightly different way. Let's try that. Oh, doesn't seem to have stamped properly. Do that again. Huh, still hasn't done it. Let me do it that way. Rub it on that way. Okay. Let's, oh, just stuck my finger in it. That's not helpful. 
try and line it up. Oh, oh, that's better. I prefer that. It's not as splodgy. All right, I'm just going to close up these dark pink <laughs> pads because I can see me getting very, very messy. I've already got ink where I didn't want it to be. Right, let's try that again. Right, so you get your silicon sheet. This time I'm going to put it directly onto the table because it might be that I need a firmer surface. So, Flirty Flamingo ink over the top. Oh, I moved it. Let's start that again. Right. Flirty Flamingo down, press, lift off, a bit splotchy, never mind. Bring that back. Line it up, rub it on, hope for the best, <laughs> and ta-da! Okay, I don't mind the splotchiness. Looks like water's dripped on it, doesn't it? Well, that is a very interesting way to colour in your, your, your lily pad flowers. I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. So look, you can see how pink it is on there, can't you? All right, let's see how much we can get off. Still looks quite pink to me. I don't know, do you think that looks lighter? I think it's worth applying a few times to get it working. Oh yes, of course, jelly plates. Yes, they would work really well. Yes, I think that is a little bit lighter. Okay, so that's one way that in which you can colour your uh, lily pads with. Um, the other way, I guess, oh, shall we do a little bit of sprinkles? I'll just move those over for a second. Um, what have we got here? I don't want to use pink. Maybe we could just do a bit of... Oh, Daffodil Delight, that'll do. So let's do a little sprinkle of Daffodil Delight. There we go. And I'll get my spritzer. She says, I haven't got my clean one at the moment. Oh, they've all got the colours in them. Right, I'll just use my good old spray bottle, which is here, which might be a little bit dark, but I'm just going to protect my surface a little bit. I don't know where that blue came from. <laughs> that kind of appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> oh dear. It's a great thing about the sprinkles. You just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, oh well. Right, so that's another way you can colour. Which is quite fun. Right, I wonder what about this one. What should we do with this one then? Oh, let me get my, I haven't got my other device going yet, so I haven't been able to read your comments so readily. Right, let's have a look. My channel. Welcome everybody, by the way. I've seen, I've seen people creeping on and commenting. So let's just go back and say hello. 
So, uh, hi, Rhonda, Martina, Connie, Gina, Christine, Kim, uh, Steph, Susan, Sheila. Uh, oh, Christine Morgan's here for the first time. Welcome, Christine. Lovely to meet you. Hasboss999. Melody Israel from Idaho. Lovely to meet you. Um, and Bobby. Hello, Bobby. What does Quilter's Plastic do? Or what is it meant for? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Monica knows. So excited. My daughter is going to sign me up as a demo for an early Mother's Day present. Brilliant. However, don't let her sign you up. You have got to do it. Uh, so you, you can't let someone else sign you up, if that makes sense. You, you've got to do it. It's quite, um, yeah. But I know what you mean. That's brilliant. Oh, Christy! <laughs> Hi. I know, I know this lady in real life. So she's new to you guys, because uh, she's new to my lives. But um, Christy Morgan is actually somebody I know in real life. <laughs> She, she's my friend's mum. <laughs> Hi, Christine. And she's been watching my One Sheet Wonders, apparently. She'll do... Oh, Gina. Okay, well, there we go. Right, let's think how to colour this one in. Now, some of you may have missed my this afternoon's unboxing. So, I will just go over quickly what I did. I did a bit of colouring with some new Stampin' Blends. Um, so here instead I've got dark flirty flamingo and light flirty flamingo and we'll go with those. This afternoon I used different colours so I'll just uh, I'll go with these ones for now. And I'm just going to do some rough colouring in. Nothing too complicated and I love these pens because they dry on impact. They're fabulous. Um, yeah, it's a great, great offer, Gina, because um, you're getting £130 of products. Oh, no, you're in, are you in the States? But anyway, if you're in the UK and you're thinking of purchasing some Stampin' Up! products, it is worth thinking of actually just signing up. If, if your wish list is more than £99, it is so worth signing up at the moment because you get extra freebies. You can choose a stamp set of your choice for free as well as £130 of product for £99. And you get the mini trimmer. If you haven't seen the mini trimmer, where have you been? Look at that. So cute. So cute. Right. Just very quickly colouring this in. Yeah, if anyone has any questions about signing up, let me let me know. If you don't want to ask them publicly, that's fine. Just drop me a either an email or contact me via Facebook. I'm happy to answer your questions, or warts and all. Because some people do have fears. You know, they think they might... Oh, I don't know. I'm not even going to suggest what they might think. Because people have all sorts of different questions. And I always say, if you've got a question, you know, ask somebody who knows the answer. Because... It might be that the answer isn't as scary as you think it is and or the answer might be simpler than you think it is and if you don't ask the question you'll never know so there we go but what do you mean what do you then if one has signed up oh you figured out how to comment labor what do you mean but what do you what do you i think i think you've missed a, wo a word out there Right, so this is Light to Daffodil Delight, and I'm just going in here, kind of focusing on the tips of these petals, and then drawing the colour inwards towards the darker pink that I did earlier. And look how that is just bringing this gorgeous flower alive with the addition of the yellow. So do remember, you can blend other colours on top of each other, you know, they they create a very interesting effect. It just lightens and brightens and makes this lily sing, doesn't it? She's 
so pretty. Right, now I've done this, I think we need to go in here now and stamp the lily pads. And this is where having the mask really is so effective because we can pop these over the top and do that. Nope, I've just got to find out where to put What's going on, woman? There we go, that's it there. If someone has signed up to Stampin' Up, do you have the obligation to constantly order? Uh, no, you don't, unless you want to remain a demonstrator. So, to remain a demonstrator, you have to order a certain amount every three months. Okay, that's if you want to stay in your demonstratorship status. So Stampin' Up! work by quarters. So obviously the first quarter of the year is January, February, March. Then the second quarter is April, May, June. Third quarter is July, August, September. Then October, November, December. Now, the quarter you sign up in, Stampin' Up! almost ignore that quarter. So you then have to the end of the second quarter to fulfill the minimum amount if you want to stay as a demonstrator. So in the UK, it works out at roughly about um, 200, and, it used to be about 275, but with the exchange rate and everything, it's, it's changed a bit. It's about 280 pounds retail, but you don't pay 280 pounds retail because you get a percentage off for being a demonstrator so it works out at about 250 pounds every quarter so in euros it's probably about 280 euros a quarter so that's just under under 100 euros a month okay but you will not have to fulfill that because we're in March now so January February March you won't have to so once you've joined it's 99 pounds to join so I don't know is it 100 euros to join I don't know then you won't have to spend your 300 euros until um July no January February March April May June so that you've got to the end of June if you want to stay if you want to stay on as a demonstrator you've just got to do that spend by June the the last day in June however stamping up also give you a month's grace so if you think oh I will spend it um and you you can do it in July then you you get a month's grace to do that but it just means then you can stay on to be a demonstrator and then you know you can place more orders um does that answer your question Martina hi Janice Hi Kay, hi Janet, hi Steph, which I filled in my first my first month, my quarter I had until June to do. Yes, yeah, Steph has been spending very happily, haven't you Steph? From what she's been saying on here. And um, if you're in Europe, you can sign up under me. Um, so if you're in Germany or Holland or... Um, uh, oh, or flip Austria <laughs> and France. Uh, you can sign up under me. Obviously, it, it would be unprecedented because it will be the first demonstrators I would have had from that are not from the UK. So that would be super exciting. Uh, and if anyone that joins my team, they um, they get added to my Facebook group. And my team chat on Facebook, I have a Facebook messenger. Um, and I, you know, from time to time I message different things and chat about stuff. And it, it's somewhere where you can ask questions and things. Right, so what about colouring in these lily pads? Now, similarly that we just done before, we can reverse these and we can stamp... You're only 800 CSV from Bronze Elite. Oh, well done. Uh, what are all the elite levels about? Ah, right, okay. So, you when you join, you are automatically called Bronze. You are at the Bronze stage. And in order to progress up the ranks, so after Bronze, there's Bronze Elite. 
then there's silver and then silver elite. But to progress up the ranks, you need to do a certain amount in sales and recruiting. So to become bronze elite, you have to do um, $1,800. So that's about £1,500, um, 1, I think, of sales. I mean, when I say sales, some people just end up buying it all themselves because they love the hobby so much. Um, and it means that you also get a higher percentage off, a discount off. So currently, when you join as bronze, you get a discount of 20% um, off the non-VAT price. I, I know that sounds really complicated, but the way I look at it is you get about 16% off your order. But then when you become Bronze Elite, you get an additional 5% off your orders. So you save more money once you get to Bronze Elite. Now, why is that darker? I must have, I must have stuck, got, there's a darker spot on my ink pad. No, you don't have to spend the 300 all at once. No, you don't. You can, you can build it up. However, if you're quite a savvy shopper, if you do place that order all at once, you, you also become the host of your own party. So remember, Stampin' Up! is a multi-level marketing company. It also works by party plan. So if you have ever been to one of those like body shop parties or pampered chef or whatever, you know when you go to the party and you, you, you spend your money, well, whoever's the host of that party, they get freebies based on the sales of that party. But if you place an order for yourself... Um, basically, if you spend um, over £150, then you get 10% of that value to add to as in free gifts. So if you were to spend £150, you actually get an additional £15 to spend on whatever you want. So with that, the, you know, the higher you go, so if your party order is 300 you actually get, I think it's 12% back instead of 10%. So that's an additional two, four, six you know, six pounds you get for free. So sometimes it is in your interest to build up um, a big order because uh, in the in Europe, now I know it's different for you guys in America because the postage works differently, but in Europe, if you place an order, you only ever pay one postage cost. So it's kind of in your interest just to place one great big order, to be honest. But you don't have to. You don't have to. Um... Any other questions? Have you re-inked it recently? I, no, I don't think I have, actually. I don't... Yeah. I, maybe I was... I'm not concentrating, to be honest, because I'm talking to you guys, so... Right, I'd like to create a really funky background to this. And... I don't want to do a bit of sponging. Maybe over one of them. Let's just see what happens. If I do a bit of... Not sponging, a bit of blending... I don't even know why I took these off. I think I was nosy. I wanted to see what they look like. So I've got Pacific Point here. I just used Call Me Clover or Champ de Treffel, Treffles, Treffel, how do you pronounce that? Or Kligrun. Kligrun? I'm afraid I didn't do any German at school, so my pronunciation is rubbish. Esther's, Esther's better at her German. Clover green, yes. Right, let's, ooh, let's just get some of this blue on here. That's quite pleasant, isn't it? And I don't mind going over the, the green, because blue and green are together on the colour wheel, so... If you go over the green, it's not going to harm it too much. It's just that if you go over the pink, it will turn it purple. So we don't want to do that. We want pink, nice, great big pink flowers. Actually, you can see where it's gone over a little bit there. Oh, I quite like that. I can live with that. But I would like some texture in the background. So why don't I stamp? There are these other little flowers and things on here that I haven't used yet. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, hello, Esther. Hi, Reet. 
So I don't know, we can have a few of these in the background. Oh, popping up to say hello. Bonjour, 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 bonjour. Hello, good day. I need to stop singing. All my monetization will disappear. <laughs> Oh, you've just run out of dimensionals, have you? So you have to place an order, Steph. <laughs> I like your thinking, girl. Oh, and what else fell into your basket while you were there? Oh. Oh, S has had a few meetings this week. So, what have you missed? Have you just said? Oh, no, she didn't ask what she missed. Sorry, it was starting to lose its sticky, that one. Might be because I keep lifting them off when I don't need to. I find these stamps very ornamental. They're very pretty, aren't they? Oh, Vicky's, Vicky had things that fell in her basket. Honestly, you'd think you were a, shop, a supermarket or something and, you know, things just fell off the shelf. Honestly, your excuses are lame. <laughs> right, oh, what about stamping a big one in the background? Let's see what that looks like. But I've got to remember to reverse it. And I'll tell you what, these are jolly thick. They're like the mountain ones, really thick photopolymer. Who's got the new mugs freebie, this, this celebration one with the mugs on it? Is that one nice and thick as well? What, like all the loo paper is Australia? I know, people's loo paper. I know, it's incredible. So in Australia, they've run out of loo paper because everyone's so scared of coronavirus. Like, like loo papers are going to save you. I don't, I don't quite get it. Um... I know people, because, is it because they've been saying if you sneeze, you need to sneeze into a tissue and throw it away? I don't know, what, what, why can't you just sneeze into a handkerchief and put it in your own pocket? Because surely it's your own germs, isn't it, going into your own pocket? If you chuck it in a bin, isn't that just like, you know, in public? But anyway, I don't know. Yeah, in the UK, we're running out of alcohol gel. So I think we're going to resort to just alcohol. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll end, I've got a bottle of Arak on my shelf that I've never opened and it's 50% alcohol and I was jokingly said to my husband the other day we're just going to have to put it in like spritzer bottles and spray the place down with this Arak because it's so strong it will kill anything oh we'll just have to start making our own vinegar vinegar is perfectly good for you know cleansing and I don't know if it kills coronavirus but it kills pretty much anything else isn't it that and lemon juice Thought you were going to say we're running out of alcohol. But yeah, but people will be eventually getting to that point. Sneeze into your bent elbow. I know. Um, I know, it's not diarrhoea. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the Australian, you know, maybe it's because the Australians are upside down. It's not their noses they're concerned about. It's their, you know what? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I love you guys in Australia. But, um... Yeah, so we've run out of gels here in the UK, apparently. Um, someone was in the supermarket the other day and they literally saw somebody, like there was a whole, you know, all, all the gels were there and he literally got his hand and just went and put them all in his basket. <laughs> ah, there we go. Mind you, it's not fun if you've got it. I, I, I appreciate that. It's not a fun, not a fun virus and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I went to get some hand wash as I've run out and it was like trying to find gold dust. There we go. Before coronavirus, nobody washed their hands. I know. My daughter's so funny because we've all had letters from school saying we are going to be encouraging the children to wash their hands. So she said when they arrive at school, they need to wash their hands. Every time they go to the toilet, they have to wash their hands. Every Which you would hope that they did anyway. But, you know, maybe not. And, um... And then she said, every time we come in from play, we have to, she goes, we have to wash our hands seven times a day. I was thinking, yeah, welcome to the grown-up world. 
I can wash my hands seven times in the space of half an hour doing stuff in the kitchen. You know, if like you touch the chicken, you wash your hands. If you pick up a bin, you wash your hands. If... Anyway, there we go. It's educating children, isn't it? Sorry, I've had a bit of a rant there, haven't I? I've done six education sessions at church on hand washing and telling people not to panic. You've Oh, you've actually had an outbreak. Oh, OK, fair enough. Yep, fair enough, I understand. People are worried, aren't they? Right, how about a little bit of purple in the background of this now? So I've done a bit of blue. Yeah, I, don't, I, I do think sometimes people think just swishing your hands under some water is washing. So it is good to teach people how to wash their hands properly, especially if they're work, working in kitchens and things. They should know how to properly wash. Right, let's do a bit of purple up here. Just thought it'd be nice to blend another colour into the background. This one sheet wonder is taking a long time, guys. I'm so sorry. I feel I keep I keep talking to stopping to talk. Need a wee frog in that lily pond. Yeah. I don't think we have any current do we have any current froggy stamps? Hi Pamela, lovely to see you. I suppose the concern is for people who are, you know, who've got underlying health issues. So if you've got asthma, and it was funny actually, a friend of mine came around the other day and he had been doing some cleaning in his home and he hadn't worn a mask and his chest was really quite bad when he came to visit. And it's people like him that I worry for and I think, oh, if you were to get it, you you know you're a bit more vulnerable and your 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 body's not in a place where it could fight it off so that would be my worry now it's interesting i've left that alone because i think i quite like it being oh watercolory so i'm kind of staying clear of that for now anyway should we have a look and see what this looks like It was someone that had returned from Iran. Yeah, well, Iran's got it terrible. And then last night, my brother and his crewmate had to be suited and booted as they went to a suspected outbreak and the person is on life support. Oh, no. Oh, well done, Martina. Right, so there we go. That is quite a nice way to create a bit of depth to a picture. Obviously, these I'm, I've designed these so that I'll cut these up and those can go on a, a card. It's not, I mean, I haven't really used them in a way that I would use them normally, but it's nice to do something a bit different and see the diff different results from different techniques. So this was the coloured in one with the blends, which looks very bright. And this one, we use the silicon matte to do the reverse filling in. And then this was just a piece of plastic packaging. So I almost want to drip water onto this this one. Shall we do that? Because it feels like these have got little drips of water already. So what you can do is you spring, sprinkle water into your hand and then just like just drip it onto your, your work and allow some of the bigger splodges <clears throat> and it will react to the water. Um, and if you want, oh, if you want smaller ones, you kind of do that to make smaller sprays. There we go. And we'll just watch and see what happens. You can actually sort of see it happening, really. Look, how cool is that? Yeah, the, the centre flowers sort of jump out at you. There they do. There we go, there's a nice bit of water there. I haven't done it on this one. I don't feel that this one needs it so much. You get a nice sort of texture with that technique. So that technique could be used also for the mountain die, uh, stamp set as well. 
Right. I fancy just doing a stamp, just stamping um, one sheet wonder with these stamps and just have, have a play with them really and see what what we can create. So let me just have a little go doing that. Not worry too much about masking or anything like that. I'm just going to take you up a little bit higher. There we go. Right, so let's have a look at these. Right. So I'll do my typical, you know, clustering, maybe two together. Oh, this is a fairly new ink pad, so it's lovely and juicy still. So it's a really gorgeous ink transfer. Oh, yummy, yummy. Hi, Chris. Howdy doody. This is a bit more me, isn't it? <laughs> Already it's a bit more me. Let's just get the ink on there. It does stamp really well. It just, just, yeah. It is, it, it does stop very well. Martina says you can do the same effect of raindrops more precisely if you wet a natural sponge and tap lightly on it. Oh, that's a useful tip. Oh, Martina, while you're on, somebody asked me to ask you, when you apply the linseed to your card stencil, how do you apply it? I thought I posted on your Facebook, but don't see it there. Oh, okay, Sheila, we'll check, I'll check later. Actually, I think I might go back in with Pacific Point. I'm really enjoying Pacific Point. I've neglected it a little bit because we've got Blueberry Bushel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pacific Point. <gasps> Shh, don't say it too loud. But, um, yes, the other colour has had my favour recently. I talk grown-up language. Hopefully the children don't understand. You know, do you, you ever used to do that? You know, when adults are, you know, trying to talk in front of children and they don't want the children to understand what you're saying, you kind of like swap words out or you spell things out and then they get to the point where they understand what you're saying. Um, with a brush. Okay, so whoever it was that asked me to ask Martina, the answer is with a brush. There we go. Okay, I'm thinking soft spring. Where's it gone? Soft spring, soft spring. And is it this one or is it? What's the other one? Um, bear with. I'm just trying to find the stamp set. Oh, that's inspiring, Iris. How lovely is the day? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to find some sort of soft, leafy effect that I can put in the background. See, I was thinking that one. I'll try it and see. I think Call Me Clover will probably be a bit too dark for it, though. So let's go. Ooh. Coastal Cabana. Oh, re well, it took me a while to choose it, to be honest. It wasn't really on my radar for a while. So this one, I'm just trying to fill in various spaces. Now, I did a similar one sheet wonder to this a few months ago using the Floral Essence stamp set, didn't I? 
Oh, I love that one sheet wonder. So loved it. I was so happy with those results. My mum and dad used to have their own language in front of us kids, but then me and my brother had our own language and I had to translate what he wanted to mum and dad. Seriously, that's interesting. A whole different language. I watched a video on YouTube the other day of a little girl who speaks seven languages and she's only four. I was like, wow. Like, if I'd had enough forethought to do that to my children, they could have learnt so many more languages. I mean, they learnt Welsh, which, you know, I made a conscious decision that they would go to a Welsh-speaking school so that they would learn a second language. But I had heard, actually, if you, you know, play languages to them, they'll pick it up. But I don't know if she must have nannies or something. I don't know. Or people in her life. Just people in her life that speak it. I don't know. I don't know her background. But yeah, this little, little girl. And she spoke each language completely beautifully. Like like she was a native speaker. It, that her accent was just brilliant. Well, I have to go and feed my husband. You don't have to feed your husband, Ricky. Not if you don't really want to. I'm sure he can feed himself. Or maybe he can't. Maybe I've been too presumptive. Lovely to see you, Vicky. Have a lovely meal. Hello, Elsa from Cali. My grandspout spe speaks English and he's learning Welsh and French. Brilliant. Oh, thank you, Elsa. Right, so that's quite nice. A nice filler isn't it now what about what about what about um, what else is in that stamp set oh where did I just put it oh it's here oh the stamps have disappeared oh they're here right let's see what else is here that I could use they do pick it up so quickly. And they don't realise that they're learning. You see, if we were to start learning a, a brand new language at this age, we'd be like, oh, it's hard work. Do I have to? Um, but kids, they're learning all the time anyway. So, and they're like sponges at that age. But can you just imagine being able to flip between two languages? Oh, it's just incredible. Oh, maybe I do use Call Me Clover for this one. Your husband can speak eight languages. Oh, that is amazing. Bik bok, chow, yig yok. Oh. So the sword sounded a bit like real words, but not quite. So I'm going to use this lily pad stamp as a kind of background leaf effect. I don't, I'm not using it as it was intended. I'm just sort of making it up, really. I mean, you could alternate, alt, alt, alternate it by having the. There's a little, like it's a little notch cut out of it, but um, let's see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could do that, so it looks like it's floating, I guess, for those ones. You can order drinks. That's well. That's important. It's. Do you know how to ask for the toilet in all those languages? That's the important thing, isn't it? Really, you know, you get to a certain age, you need to know where the toilet is. It's very therapeutic, people. Right, there we go. 
wondering if we do need a little bit more green in here so I'm thinking this one Ah, it's subtle, very subtle. I always forget that about this stamp. It's very because it's supposed to be like a watercolour. See that? It's not a really solid image. It's sort of grainy, but it's nice. Very gentle. Great for filling in spaces, isn't it? It's fabulous stamp. Yeah, I suppose because some European languages have a Latin root. So if you know, well, if you speak English, then there'll be similar words in French. There'll be similar words in Spanish, Portuguese. But then what what languages are linked to German languages? Uh, sorry, the German language. What other European languages have their root in Germanic History or background. Like I naively thought that, you know, just a lot of the European languages were all connected, but they're not, are they? There's is it Slavic? Is it the Slavic languages? Those are different, aren't they? Or kind of I don't know, I foolishly like assumed over like Romanian and Polish are going to be similar but they're clearly not you know that's just me being presumptive yes yeah it is um however the modern Welsh dictionary was some of the words in there were taken from other, I think when the dictionary got to be created, the guy who did it, he, he did take words from other things. So um, it's interesting to understand. Yeah, it's interesting to hear the similarities in certain words. Like, I don't know, I think I've talked about this before. The word for Easter is PASG, P-A-S-G, which um, other languages use that as well. And it's similar to our word for, you know, the Pascal lamb we talk about. Um, and I presume that's Latin in its roots. I don't know. <coughs> yes, it is a little bit related to get some Gaelic languages. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hi, Christine. Making cards with this one sheet today? Ooh, might do. I stamped in the gap then. There we go. Let's cover that up. Right, there we go. Um, I'm wondering whether to brighten this up now with a little bit of a zingy colour. And I'm not going to go to the effort of trying to colour it in precisely, so I'm just going to use the back side of this. Um, and I'm wondering, what about like a yellow or an orange or something? just to pow make it brighter so or we could go peachy if we don't want to go too far down that route so we've got grapefruit grove which is one of the colors that will be leaving us in june so if you ha don't have it then i do recommend you do purchase it alongside the reinca So remember, it's not about lining this up precisely. It's not meant to. Oh, that looks quite bright, doesn't it? Do second generation. <laughs> it will lighten, so I'm not 
not too worried. It will lighten up. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, Afrikaans has got a Dutch root, hasn't it? Don't forget all these little side ones. Oh, this reminds me of an African um, print, like fabric print. Oh, that's romantic, Christine. How sweet. Um, okay, and then the this one. So again, remember you take it off and then you can just reverse, stick it on reversed. And then... Now you may want to clean off your stamp between doing this because I've just realised that the Pacific, Pacific point has been reactivated as I'm stamping the grapefruit grove on it and it's lifting off and then it's transferring onto my ink pad so it might be worth just cleaning off your stamp so that doesn't happen. Right, do we want to add anything else or shall we leave it at that? There's this really cute little one here. I'm wondering if this one can just poke, poke out from the sides. Not necessarily going to be the same place on each one, it's just where there's a gap. It feels that it needs something. So remember when doing these one sheet wonders, you don't have to be super prescriptive. Once you've got your main motifs in place um, and you've filled in whatever you want to fill in, it, it's just about filling the gap. So you have to trust your instinct on this. Don't just blindly go in there and think, well, I did it on that one, therefore I need to do it on that one. Oh, how did I get ink on there? we go. Dunani, as they say in Wales. Right. Barod. Finished. Yes, your int. <laughs> Keep practicing, Martina. Those lily pads look like wings. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder if we could incorporate that into something. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, so that's that one. First one. Um, the light one looks odd now. What, this one? 
Oh, shall I go over it, Wendy? Shall I make it, you know, join the club? Yeah, it was a second generation one that I did, just to see if it worked. But you've all noticed it now and gone, no, it doesn't work like that. Hold on, I'm just trying to find what it did now. There we go. There we go. I know. <laughs> Why did you get? <laughs> I was not stumped. I didn't even get it done. I didn't even do it right either. But never mind. Right, so these, I guess, could make four card fronts. Or you could cut it down and do... I don't know. Lots of different ways you could cut this down. So if I cut it so that you get two full card fronts to start off with. Sometimes it is just nice to have a card that's all pattern. Nothing on it. That's the way it is. It is what it is. Then you can put a sentiment on afterwards. That one, it's a bit more centralised there, but I, I don't mind it being a little bit off. It's still balanced, isn't it? It's worked out balanced there, so. Hiya, Jan. The top left corner blue needs a lily pad underneath it. Oh, yes, you're right. Well spotted. There we go. Happy now. <laughs> Very well spotted, Pam. Oops. Right. Sorry to jerk it around. Let me take out my charger, then I won't need to be careful of the wire. Right, and then I guess the other thing you could do is cut it so that you end up with a, a portion of it. So if you go seven by I guess seven by ten, let's have a look. What's that? Oh eleven, there we go. Seven by eleven. Seven eleven. That's in centimetres, so that's approximately two and three quarters by four and a quarter. But you might want to change the ratios on that because you guys your your cards tend to be a little bit fatter and shorter in America but there we go that's roughly what we're aiming for um, and then you could always yeah trim that one down again um, then you could always square these off you could have a square piece um, and, and have that for a square card that's another option so there we go so I guess that's three different styles of card that you could end up with. So just measure that. Where am I at? That's, mm. I'll just trim that down to eight centimetres. It just makes life a bit easier for me. Oh, it, it wobbled. Did you see that then? Oh, well, it's fine. Hi, Gamer Gone Mad. Nice to see you. Helga. Hegla. Misread that, sorry. Yeah, so that would be nice on a, a square. If you wanted to, you know, put extra 3D elements, you can do. But sometimes when paper is so busy, I don't think it needs much more. And if you've hand stamped it as well, and you take, you've taken the time to hand stamp it, you might not need. Oh, hi, Cindy. Do watch the replay. Uh, Wendy, I feel you. I totally feel you. Now, I, you know, earlier I said I had that packaging from my, from the blends packaging. 
So I thought, oh, I can't throw these away. These are a fabulous size and I've discovered they fit my dies in. But I've got no space on my desk for it. <laughs> I'm like, where am I going to put that? So I'm going to have to move some other stuff around to kind of, yeah. <laughs> but I thought this was quite cool because look, it's the blend storage. Sorry. Yeah, stamping blend storage storage box. <laughs> It's the box that the storage came in. There we go. And um, I just pushed everything in. Uh, just to make... I thought I may as well leave all the pieces and just push it all in. And then I can decorate this. Actually, I should have made something to decorate this with. Never mind. I'm assuming this label will come off. Oh, I've been using my heat tool to take labels off. It is fabulous. If you've got a sticky label, just put your heat tool on it for a little bit. Warm it up. And the label comes off. Oh! Brilliant. Right, shall I flippy de roo the camera and just say a quick hi to you? And if you've got any questions about what I've just done, um, please let me let me know. Right, where are we? Hello, I'm still wearing my hat. I'm still cold. <laughs> Maybe not so cold now, but my hair's got is a bit of a mess. Um, hello. Right, let's have a look. Are there any questions regarding what I've just done? Ooh, Christine's done her first video. Awesome. Great. It was frustrating, Pamela. I wanted to make some cards and have a cast of practice the 17th. Oh, yeah. I hate that. When you set aside a bit of time to do something and you don't quite get it done. I have, though. I'm very chuffed. I've prepped most of one card that we're going to be doing next Tuesday. So that would be fun. Um, and I'm thinking about a second card. <laughs> Get my iron levels checked. What? Because I was cold. Okay. I don't. I don't think it was my iron levels. Um, I think it's because it's cold. <laughs> I was cold earlier because I went out to. Um, we had our church meeting, so I had to go out in the cold then. And the building we were in they heat it up for the day but obviously the heating goes off and so it was a little bit cold there so I, I just still had my hat on from when I came in so I'm fine now but no it's good to get get your iron levels checked get your vitamin d levels checked all that so this is for an unknown number of mixed age children for mother's day uh do you have to make a card wendy or is it just a project because I could give you an idea for that one Right, is there any other questions? I'm just looking at your comments. Oh, I was waiting for Wendy to answer. Okay, I'll give you the idea anyway. So, a useful little project for kids for Mother's Day is... I don't know in your church, we usually give like little pot plants to, to all the ladies. Lolly sticks. Okay, so what you do is you get the thick lolly sticks and you pre-prep by, ignore the face on this one, but you can pre-prep them by sticking some sort of shaped cardboard onto them. So these are just, uh, I think these are the two inch punch. Um, so two inch punch or a label punch something that will just create a basis so you can stick those on using the tear tape or hot glue and then you just have a whole basket of flowers all different shaped flowers and then you um, just let them stick them on with stick glue so they could just great big flower there and then if you want to you can maybe pre stamp some like sentiments like I don't know like either a little bible verse or something and then you can just get them to stick maybe stick that on one side and then stick a flower on the other and then you can put it in the pot plant that you're going to give the kids to give to their parent to their mums or whatever so that that's a great nifty little thing because it's sometimes you can you know they get over they make so many cards and they make a card at school they you know they might make a card another week at church or whatever so you know mum's you know, there's only so many cards. 
but putting it on a little pot plant thing means that they can keep that then throughout the year and if it's a nice little bible verse it's quite an encouraging thing to do so um oh christine likes the blues and the oranges <laughs> thanks christy heart idea ruth are you saying it's a good idea you could do it hearts as well if you wanted to yeah <coughs> and then make sure you write the kid's name or write the parent's name on it so this was the other week we did a, a story in sunday school and as we told the story the kids had to hold up a sad face like a hmm or a happy face <laughs> so we did the craft right at the beginning of sunday school rather than doing it later oh i am okay um, and then as we told the story, they had to show the ha happy face and the sad face. Do you want to see where I put it? Can you see it? Oh, look, it's up there. Look, 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 look. Can I put it there? I put it on my shelf. It, it looks precarious, but I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. And it, I, oh, I did half a post on Instagram with a photo of it. Um, and I forgot to finish off the post, but there we go. I'll post it later. I was going to punch three or four tulips and stick them on a straw. Perfect, Wendy. That would be fine as well. I guess a straw might be a little bit flippy floppy. That's all. Oh, oh, sorry. You weren't necessarily thinking of putting it in a plant pot, were you? That's my idea. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mixing ideas. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, chill upon a straw. Yeah, that's fine. I guess this is just... Were you going to get them to fold fold the tulips, though, to make them 3D? Depending on the age group, you might find that a little bit tricky. So, just see. <gasps> Lovely to see you, Miss Helen. Take care. Have a great day. Okay, any other ideas, questions, whatever? Um, Martina did say, what did you say you applied your linseed with? Was it a brush? I think she said a brush. Where are you, Martina? I'm scrolling back to see what you said earlier. I was going to score some for the older kids and the younger ones could put one in front and back with tear tape. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, great idea. Oh, do Jane. Yeah, watch me on fast forward. Yeah, I'm, I was a bit slow right at the beginning of the video. Do you want to see what we did? Yeah. Sorry, sometimes it's just like that. The process seems slow. But it was good to experiment and see, you know, what looked good. So, right, I'm off, I'm going to go to bed, nice to see you all, and maybe tomorrow I have got a bit of a pile of One Sheet Wonders that need cutting up, so maybe I might do some, you know, putting cards together, the One Sheet Wonders, not slow, it's relaxing, oh, thank you Wendy, <laughs> right, take care for now guys. Mwah. Bye.